Not at the end yet, but almost. I'm going to try to do this in three minutes. So just as uh, we're getting set up here, um, I wanted to tell everyone that I'm very proud to be here. Actually, this is a return for me because I'm a graduate of Duquesne University, uh, 2002 from the business school. Yeah. And for the past year, I have actually been bragging when the school comes up that I go to the school that has the best men's basketball program in the city. But I'm going to change it. I'm going to say that they host the best conference, and it's this conference. This is really, um, this is a personal thing for me. I'm very passionate about diversity, and I'll take you through why. So when I graduated from Duquesne, I was never on an airplane. I'm from Pittsburgh, but really didn't know that I even spoke differently, that there was someone that could root for another team but a Pittsburgh team, which shocks me still to this day. <laughs> Fifteen years later, I've recruited from 60 countries. I've lived in three of them. My journey started here in Pittsburgh, recruiting at a time, believe it or not, 2002. If you could imagine, there was no social media. The way I recruited healthcare professionals at the time, I had to call the state of Pennsylvania to get them to send me a list of registered nurses, their home addresses, then I had to send them snail mail, or call their landline and hopefully not get crazy Uncle Eddie or an answering machine. So recruitment was quite challenging. So I was an early adopter of technology as it became available. And technology really, in the past 15 years, has shifted the way we as consumers digest information in general. So I'm gonna go really quickly through here because I started to do a lot of recruitment basically all over the world for universities, hospital systems, and government. So Georgetown University and Cleveland Clinic were some of the big, bigger projects that I led. Cleveland Clinic in Abu Dhabi, for those of you that aren't familiar, Cleveland Clinic is two hours away from here and has about 50,000 employees that work there. I worked on the project in Abu Dhabi at a time where we were a construction site, and I had to recruit 3,000 people from 60 countries, clinical and non-clinical, some of the best clinicians in the world, and I had to get them to move their entire families to a place that, from a perception standpoint, wasn't necessarily considered safe, wasn't necessarily considered legally compliant with malpractice or other things that people would be familiar with. And I had to make a compelling enough argument to get individuals to believe in something that wasn't an operating facility yet. So I used a lot of uh, storytelling, a lot of concepts that I actually learned at Duquesne University. I was a marketing major. And so I'll show you through a business case study what, what it looks like. So this is actually a search that I just did this past year for George Mason University. And if you can't read what you see here, don't worry. This is actually how they were advertising the job um, for a marketeer. This is for a vice president of communications and marketing role. And printed out, this is five pages long. Uh, try looking at this on your phone. You, you just won't. So unfortunately, even though the rest of the world is kind of caught up when it, terms to, it, when it comes to how they sell their product or service, HR or recruitment hasn't necessarily adopted, in all cases, that, those same visual techniques. So let me show you what I did for them. So it's not live now because I successfully completed the search, but right at that point you would have the ability to go to a one-click apply, which connects you to your LinkedIn feed. In the total time it would take you to watch that video and apply for the job, you can do it in under two minutes. Compare that with an applicant tracking system that your company might force candidates to use today, and most likely it's taking 20 to 30 minutes. Now imagine you're a passive candidate, and guess what? The best candidates are passive candidates. They have jobs. 
uh, they don't have the time to go and find this out and necessarily uh, apply for your position. I also don't believe that they need to know me. I would love to get to know all of you, but the reality is there are billions of people out there that have professional skill sets. I want to be able to tell a story that wants them to engage with the institution that they potentially would work with. So I'll, I'll just take a couple seconds here just to show you the back end of how I set this up. So if you're not familiar, this is a social graph on Facebook. Actually, everyone has access to it. In the top left, I'm picking titles that are either lateral moves for people or a promotional opportunity. I'm using Boolean logic. That's just the and operator here to combine it with ethnic affinity on the bottom because they were looking for diversity in this position. It gives me a potential reach on the right-hand side of 7,000 people that I know that I'm going to target. And here are the results. I know that I've reached 60 percent women. I can break it down, slice and dice it in so many different ways. I can also control my cost. Those of you that recruit in higher education, uh, oftentimes you'll hear it's, we place an ad in the Chronicle of Higher Education. That's a sunk cost. It's in print. I can change this in real time if it's not working. But uh, the last thing I want to point out to you guys is the bottom. This was viewed 14,000 times, if you see on the top left, by 5,000 of the 7,000 that I was targeting. On the bottom, if you can't read it, only 6% watched that video through a traditional desktop. So it's, if, if your advertisement doesn't speak to people for a job on their cell phone, you might, you're gonna miss a lot of candidates. So a, as you start to see opportunities change and you start to see uh, potentially the need to diversify your candidate pool, start at the root of the problem. Look at how, you, how you're actually communicating to folks about opportunities that are available to you. I think my time is up. We're located here right in Market Square, so always around and happy to come back to Duquesne anytime. Thanks, guys.